Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to episode 16 of My Week in Horror. It's been a few weeks since I've actually popped an episode together, and this one came about because I got a message on Facebook saying, why haven't you done an episode of My Week in Horror in a couple of weeks? Okay, that's not what the person said, Lyle. Uh, thank you. But it was more of a, hey, Dan, you haven't done one. Did I miss something? No, you hadn't missed anything. I'd just been lazy. So I've got a new episode for you. But there's no theme for this episode. There's just four random movies that I've watched recently. And they're from you know, really different time periods uh, of the last 20 odd years. So let's have a look at tonight's lineup. Uh, a co-production between China and Hong Kong from 2013 called Baby Blues. Uh, a, we have to have a crazy film from Japan, I think. So this is from 2019. It's Hell Girl. Um, we're going to go to 2002 and have a look at a Hong Kong film called The Wicked Ghost 3, The Possession. And the newest movie on this list, and easily the worst of the lot, from China. The 2022 movie Mirror World, also known as Mirror Fairy. As always, we have a lot to get through, and my memory is so bad that I probably don't remember any of these movies. So let's get started with Mirror World. Now, I'm only getting started with Mirror World because it's the newest movie on this list, but I actually believe it's not the newest movie because there's no um, golden dragon at the start of this film to actually tell me when it was uh, passed by the Chinese film regulators. So I believe this movie is actually really old, like four years old, uh, but just hasn't been released as of yet because there's quite a few telltale signs in this movie, like uh, old-looking iPhones. And the fact that the cast... And director um, made th their last bunch of movies was 2017-18. So I really don't believe this movie is a 2022 film at all. Anyway, this movie has a confused uh, title. It's either called Mirror World or Mirror Fairy, depending on which part of Dolban you look at. So let's check out what this stupid, and it really is a stupid film. Let's check out what this stupid film's about. A group of friends who also happen to be annoying internet personalities hunting down fame and fortune decide to play a game one evening that involves a candle, a mirror, and some kind of ritual. The main girl, Shan Shan, falls into some type of coma where she enters the mirror world, resulting in the doctors having no idea what to do with her. But her university professor, who just so happens to be running a nightmarish experiment that involves entering someone's subconscious mind, and who also happens to be her sister's ex-boyfriend, what are the chances of that, huh, decide to enter her mind to see if they can recover her consciousness. But what they find there is more terrifying than they originally thought. You know what? That's a load of bullshit. I'm good at writing some of these synopsises sometimes, and I think this probably was one of my best. This movie's... It, it, typical Chinese horror film. The first 30 minutes have got all the horror... And the last hour is just bullshit. And this movie is is the pure epitome of some kind of bullshit. Because it's really fucking boring. And that's what happened. I fell asleep. Probably. I think so. Fell asleep. Um, and it it's usually it's unusual. Because the main girl, Shan Shan, is played by a really... Good, I think she's good looking. I think she's cute. Zeng uh, Yilan. Who's... Excuse me. Who's been in... A few other horror movies that have all been fucking terrible. Including another one that I was going to cover in this, but I never watched the whole thing, so I don't think I can talk about it. Um, and so when she and the other main girl that's in it, they've been in this movie called Taishan, The Table Fairy. So, you know, I kind of know who these these actors are. And, and this movie's directed by the guy who did Under the Bed, uh, two and three. So I thought it was a Film Moon movie, which I'm going to cover Film Moon one day. They make some of the wildest Chinese horror films. Um, but it wasn't. So that's it. So, the movie is really ridiculous. In the sense that the translation's pretty poor to start with. So you're not getting the movie's best so straight away. But the premise is a bit dumb. Like a bunch of girls go to do an internet stream at one of the girls' abandoned family mansion. Um, and then um, something happens with the mirror. Um, she gets cast into a parallel world. Kind of looks a bit cool, to be honest. Um, 
But then the story goes on to this weirdo, creepy science fiction type story that involves the professor and his creepy experiments and his sister that comes out of nowhere. Now, I fail to believe, I really, really do fail to believe that the professor didn't know that this girl was his ex-girlfriend's sister. And it tries to explain it by saying the ex-girlfriend's, the, the, well, the sister, the ex-girlfriend, the sister, yeah, is kind of excommunicated from the family. Because in the end, the whole movie is about this girl stuck in her subconscious mind with her dad because her dad died and she felt guilt about the death of her father and all this kind of bullshit. It really, really is typical Chinese horror movie where they start off with a half-decent, strong premise, and in the end, it's a completely different film that you think, what the fuck did I just spend the last 75 to 80 minutes watching? Because these two things don't match up. Luckily for you, you don't have to watch it, because I did. And also, if you wanted to watch it, I don't think you could find it anyway. So I don't know why I'm covering it if you're watching it thinking, yeah, I might want to check that out. My apologies. Using the ghost rating, which stands for great horror or stupid trash, one ghost, because it's Chinese and it's Chinese horror, and it's really bad. Not even the cute chick that plays Shan Shan can save this. Let's get on to the next film. So you know what, I'm gonna work my way backwards. And next on the list then, takes us to Hong Kong, to the oldest movie on the list, 2002, called The Wicked Ghost 3, The Possession. Now. I haven't seen the previous two Wicked Ghost films, but from what I understand, and it's typical with Hong Kong films, they're not related at all. Just, you know, kind of, there's the name, that's it, boom. The reason I wanted to watch this is because it had Grace Lamb in it, and I like Grace Lamb. And we've done a lot of Grace Lamb movies on this channel, like we've covered a lot of her movies on this channel, but never in an episode of My Week in Horror, because she's not usually a horror person, an actress. But she did this time. Um, so let's check out what this film's about. We follow May, played by the awesome Grace Lamb, who's an assistant on a film set who finds a spooky location to film a horror movie. She disturbs a shrine at the house to ensure that it's not in the way of their shoot, but it releases the spirit that resides within, a lonely man who gets rather possessive of poor May. This results in a series of unfortunate deaths on both the movie set and in May's personal life, until a shaman helps to uncover the cause of the misfortune, who the ghost is, and what they can do to satisfy it. So straight off the bat, the appeal of a Grace Lamb movie is to see Grace Lamb naked. But Grace Lamb doesn't like to always get her kid off in all of her films, which can make wanting to see her naked in films frustrating, because you don't know which ones to pick. And we've covered a lot of her movies. So we've covered Sexy Soccer, which she doesn't strip off in, My Horny Girlfriend, which she does strip off in, then we covered um, something the other day. Uh, what the fuck was it? Oh my God. Mental blank, mental blank, mental blank, mental blank, mental blank. What was it called? What was it called? Come on, come on, Dan. Use your head. Crime of a Beast, right? Not naked in it. Then I checked out God.com because it had Lewis Koo in it, naked in it. So I don't know, understand, Grace, what your, what your deal is with flashing your boobies in movies. Do it or not. Anyway. Wicked Ghost 3, The Possession, stars a very young Philip Kilm. So does God, no, so does um, the movie Crime of a Beast. Um, so interesting to see that Grace Lamb has actually starred with. She's not just some B-grade actress who gets her tits out every now and then. She's actually been with quite a lot of good Hong Kong actors. Would I call this movie good? Fucking no. Not at all. It's shot on video. It's very clearly shot on video. There's a lot of problems with this film. And it's a very typical Hong Kong movie where the movie only exists in its world. And what I mean by that is that all the outside forces that would normally affect our everyday life don't come into play in this movie. So thus, no police. No consequences for doing things. It's just... Uh, it, it's like the movie is written as if you could do whatever you want in the world, but you're still stuck to a structure of a movie. So scenes go very quickly, kind of don't make sense. The plot point plot holes are massive. That's typical for Hong Kong films, plot holes all over the place. And there's kind of no consequences to things happening. People die. There's no investigations. There's no causes of what's going on. It's just, hey, this guy's dead. Let's move on. What makes that more mystifying is that they're shooting a movie and the people on the movie set are dying. Um, 
And it doesn't seem to shut down the production of the film. Now, there are some funny jokes in this film. And hence, I thought this was a comedy horror. But I believe it's not supposed to be a comedy horror. I believe this is supposed to be a proper Cat 3 horror. Um, and someones I think someone's fucked up along the way. Uh, we've got, um, you know, typical actors in the movie who play very dramatic over over acting actors. We've got a, a few kind of good horror scenes in it, but then they end up being practical jokes. So, for example, there's a horror scene that happens in the stu- in the offices of the film studio that involves the flickering of lights. It's quite good, right? And they. But in the end, you find out that the, the two of the girls are just playing a prank on the main actress. And it's not, an, in fact, a scary scene at all. Now, there's a lot of possessions, a possession that happens in this movie. But it's not it's not permanent possession. Like It's very brief. And then the ghost moves on to someone else. In fact, and actually, there's a really funny bit in the film where Philip Kiln thinks he's getting it on with Grace Lamb's character in an alleyway and he gets busted by a cop and it happens to just be a paper doll. That's that's quite funny and I like that scene. And it leads to the bit of the suspicion or, or suspicion that Philip Kung's character is a bit crazy, which he kind of is. But the film's not that good because it just can't make up its mind uh, which path it wants to go down. Does it want to be a serious comedy? A serious horror film? Or does it want to be a comedy? Does it want to actually tell a legitimate story? Or does it just want to be silly? So in the end, you get a story about, um, you know, a ghost who's a lonely man who uh, finds an attraction to Grace Lamb and falls in love with her. So yes, the ghost falls in love with Grace Lamb's character. We have a director in the movie who's dating a woman who just happens to be a shaman and who also happens to be able to piece together everything that's going on. I don't buy that for a second. And in fact, that's just so typical Hong Kong. It's, yeah, just a bit rubbish. But the film was kind of fun in certain spots. And I did like that the fact that the main character called Tom Cool um, played Game Boy all the time. Well, what appeared to be a Game Boy, but set in 2002, I don't kind of see what kind of Game Boy it is. Should be a Game Boy Color. Game Boy Advance, maybe? What was that in 2002? Certainly not the old brick Game Boy. Anyway, we're not talking about Game Boys. We're talking about the movie. And the movie itself is kind of alright. But if you're wanting to see Grace Lamb's tits, this is not the film. Sorry. Using the Great Horror or Stupid Rate, Stupid Trash, can't even remember what the name of my own fucking thing is. Great horror, stupid trash. I'm going to give this two ghosts because it's not as bad as Mirror World. It's not a one ghost film. Um, but it's not that great either. There's a little bit of enjoyment to be had here with some wacky special effects. Um, watching Grace Lamb fixing a computer just by going, click, click, click. I've deleted a couple things. I fixed the computer. Bullshit. I don't buy that for a second. Come on. Come on, Hong Kong filmmakers. Um, but it's still kind of fun. And a kid gets killed in it. So that's your thing. Yeah, a kid gets killed in it. That's pretty dark. Huh. Let's move on. Actually, before we get on to the next movie, a special word from me. Pardon the interruption, everyone. I thought I'd just take a brief moment of your time to tell you about how The Arty Dans is on all those social media sites. So firstly, you can find me on Facebook at Arty Dans. You can find me on Instagram at, at The Arty Dans. You can find me on Reddit as the Artie Dans. You can also find me on the web at www.theartydans.com and you can also find me on Odyssey as, take a guess, The Artie Dans. Thank you and let's get back to the video. Ah, thanks Dan. Always good to know that I'm available on all that crappy social media uh, if you want to ever connect with me. And also the best way and one of my favorite ways is if you go to Substack and sign up to substack.theartydan, or is it theartydan.substack? Anyway, whatever it is, I'm going to put a link down the bottom of the screen, um, where I post all the video reviews, the trailers, everything that's there. Um, there's some affiliate links to PlayAsia if you ever feel like buying something, game or a movie, and and you know want to give me a couple dollars just for making a sale. That's pretty awesome if you can do that. Otherwise. Um, that's how you can find me. And then I'm assuming some of you are finding me because I am getting friend requests on, on Facebook and that's, I enjoy that. So thank you. 
So now we're going to look at a Japanese film called Hell Girl. And this is from 2019. So from what I understand, there are quite a few Hell Girl movies. And my guess is this is based on a manga, like they always seem to be. Uh, but I didn't want to research too much into this film because I kind of wasn't really into it. But anyway, let's check out what Hell Girl is about. Have you ever wanted to get revenge on someone who wronged you? That's the premise of this film, in where users can access a special website at midnight and input a person's name, which then wakes up the Hell Girl and her minions who will torture and kill the person sending them to hell. The only catch is, when you die, the Hell Girl can claim your soul for hell too. We follow a schoolgirl and her new friend, who gets cast as the singer of a heavy metal group after the previous girl is slashed in the face by a crazed fan. She gets her revenge on the fan by calling the Hell Girl, which sparks the interest of a journalist who believes the schoolgirl's new friend is caught up in a dangerous cult that plans to sacrifice her. Or something like that. Because it's... I actually don't think my synopsis does this movie any justice. Essentially, you've got a young schoolgirl who seems to be kind of bullied by her friends, uh, who meets up with this alternative chick at a concert um one day when she's at this concert by herself and some pervert tries to you know, well not tries to some pervert grabs her ass and she just and this other chick just drags the pervert and beats the shit out of him in the foyer of the concert hall and they become friends uh, and then they meet the singer of the heavy metal band that they're there to see who invites them to audition for um a role uh what unbeknownst to them at the time is that um, he thinks there's uh, getting auditioned for uh, like a backup singer or a yeah, background singer but um, the role gets upgraded once uh, this idol uh, gets slashed in the face by the crazed fan and the idol how does the idol find out about hell girl I'm trying to think she finds out about this hell girl and that kind of launches the hell girl kind of pattern um because then she decides she doesn't the the guy who slashed her in the face rather than apologizing to her says that she deserved it and he's not sorry so she decides to call the hell girl to get her revenge on him um and then she tells the guy's mother who then calls the hell girl to get revenge on her starting this this cycle of revenge um but at the same time there's a journalist uh, who takes photos at the concert of the girl who gets slashed and the journalist's mother um, was a Hell Girl victim or user. So he knows about the Hell Girl, but he doesn't know the details of Hell Girl. So he follows these people, hoping to find out more about the Hell Girl. I fucked this up completely. I've really, it's really kind of a bit. It's just one of those movies that you'll watch. And you kind of think, I don't really want to get too invested in the story. I just want to watch it to see what happens. I was a bit disappointed that this wasn't as gory as I was thinking of. Because, you know, when I think of Japanese kind of films like this, the title Helgo, I was expecting, you know, a, a Noboru Iguchi film. Something like that. Or um, Tomamatsu or a Nishimura type film. And I wasn't getting that. I wasn't getting the gore fountains. Uh, but then I wasn't also not getting the rubber, the rubber, um, you know, rubber limbs like they, they tend to do in their movies. This is very kind of, you know, production value side of it. So thus, I don't think I was into this film as much as I possibly should have been. And I don't have anything to compare it to in regards to other Hell Girl movies. So... I can't say whether this is good or not compared to the other ones. I can only say it's good compared to what I saw out of this film. And i got to say it was kind of average. And maybe I'm wrong. I'm happy to be wrong. I'm happy if you tell me in the comments section below, you've seen Hell Girl and you thought that was pretty fucking awesome. And I'd love to know why you thought it was awesome. But if you also thought it and thought, eh, it's a bit shit too, I'd be curious to know why you thought it was a bit shit. I'm going to be honest with you kind of don't remember too much about this. I was probably wavering in and out of being asleep. Because it's cold here in Melbourne lately. It's like really fucking cold. So I sit on the couch with my Udi on, and I watch these movies. And my Udi's really warm. And sometimes I just drift off to sleep. Especially if the movies are not engaging. This one kind of wasn't. 
which is a real shame because I was expecting something really good from a Japanese film and I didn't get it here. So apologies. Um, great horror or stupid trash, the ghost rating. Unfortunately, I'm only going to give it two. And that's because I kind of just couldn't get into it that great. And I didn't think it was that awesome. I mean, it had a great premise. I like the idea of getting revenge. I also like the idea that getting revenge also come with a caveat that you're also fucked as well. That was pretty good. But beyond that, can't give the movie any more. So two ghosts for Hellgirl. Now, let's get on to the next film. And I should remember a lot of it because I watched it last night. The final movie of tonight's episode. Dumpster fire of an episode. I hope you are enjoying tonight's episode. It's, it's, sometimes I just sit here with the microphone and I have no idea what to say. Uh, especially if I watched the movies a long time ago and I'm trying to struggle to remember anything about them but these movies i kind of all watched a bit recently so i shouldn't be able to remember more and this one specific specifically because i watched it last night baby blues this is a co-production between china and hong kong and it shows it's from 2013 so let's check out what this film's about a young couple move into a luxury house oh luxury luxury house in hong kong where they are warned by the local vagabond living on the street out in front to move out immediately as there's something evil in the house Determined to prove him wrong, they set up their new house alongside an ugly-looking doll left behind by the previous owner. The husband is a music producer, and he is inspired to write a song about death thanks to the doll, and the wife falls pregnant with twins. However, the husband is caught in a tryst with a musician, and the wife manages to only give birth to one healthy child, and suffering from postnatal depression, or baby blues, she substitutes the doll for the dead child. But the husband and his sister-in-law suspect something evil lives in the house and they investigate and get to the bottom of the evil living within. You know, it must just be Chinese movies that I can write really good synopsises about. Because what I think it is, is I watch the movie and I think, fuck you guys could have done a lot better. And that's kind of what happens in this film as well. I think, fuck you kind of could have done a lot better. But... The reason you couldn't do a lot better is because it's a goddamn co-production with China. Now, this is one early, very early co-production. 2013 um, would have been around the time when the China-Hong Kong kind of film partnerships were starting to really ramp up. Uh, so at that time, we started to get a few of those action thriller movies that went from being really cool infernal affairs types to start being serious straight down the, straight down the line type affairs right and so they started also to make a couple of horror films now as we all know horror in china is just a genre no normal director would touch and in an episode of my week in horror we are going to look at foreign directors who have directed horror films in china that's an interesting gonna, gonna be an interesting episode right because there are four brave directors who decided to take on that uh, particular genre Let's see if they passed when we make the episode. But we're talking about Baby Blues. Now, Baby Blues, I'm sorry, I'm just going to quickly look up um, the cast list for it. Baby Blue stars Raymond Lamb. Now, Raymond Lamb, you'll recognize straight away as soon as you see him. If you're a person who watches a lot of Hong Kong films, is he's been in stuff like uh, Peace Storm. What a fucking great name for a movie that is, Peace Storm. It's like 50 guys in a public toilet all pissing at the same time. Pistol. Who the fuck named that film? He's also in that stupid new Kung Fu Cult Master with Donnie Yen, and he was also in Stupid Detectives vs. Sleuths with um, Sean Lau. That was fucking terrible film. Absolutely terrible film. But anyway, so he's got a recognizable face. You know who he is. He's done a lot of stuff recently. Um, also in this film, you've got um, Karina Ng, uh, who plays the um, the sister. Look at a very recognizable face too. But then when I clicked on her to figure out where have I seen this chick before, I might I don't recognize a single goddamn film that she'd been in. But there is one person who you will recognize, and that's the old guy. Uh, Lo Hoi Pang is the guy who plays the person that I'm talking about. He's the dude across the road from saying, hey, you got to move out of the house straight away. This guy has a recognizable face. Rigor Mortis, Ice, uh, Iceman, Drug War, Blind Detective, Three. I mean, this guy is a Hong Kong legend. With Hong Kong movies. Never, from what I can understand, been in the leading role. Always just been in the background. But he's in this film, and again, he's in the background of it. Anyway, enough about the fucking cast. 
to the movie itself. The movie itself isn't too bad. And it's got a great premise, right? They f- they inspect this house uh, hoping to buy it. Um, they decide they want to buy it. And who blames them? Because it's a fucking great house, to be honest. Uh, but there's a box left behind that contains this very ugly looking doll. And as I'm talking to you now, uh, on this screen here, I have a poster of the movie. And it's the fucking doll looking straight at me. And it is it is goddamn scary looking and I'm, I'm, my eyes are keep darting over there to look at this fucking poster i'll see if i can pop it up on the screen but what is staring at me in the face right now and i don't like it so maybe i'm just going to cover it hold on give me a second yeah i've covered it now so i don't have to look at that fucking baby doll face anyway doll doll does this creepy shit where it um it will move and it will bleed from its eye um and so the wife gets an attachment to the doll straight away. And it's not explained why. So just you think the wife's a fucking Fruit Loop, right? She writes a blog. So yeah, she's a bit of a Fruit Loop. So she uh, gets attached to this doll straight away. He is a music producer. And uh, in a uh, meeting at work, they decide that they need to come up with a fresh new song. So he decides he's going to write about death. Uh, and he's clearly inspired by this doll because the doll's there when he writes the song. Um, and when he, he when he gives the the song to his wife to listen to, she throws up immediately, which is probably a good indication the song shit. But what it actually was was she was pregnant, and then he gives the CD to the singer, and she has a horrible car accident. So this this becomes the cursed song. So this new singer comes in, and she's like, "Well, it's a cursed song. I want to do it." And then they end up having this... No, well, they don't have up having an affair. But the wife, who's very pregnant, catches them kissing in the swimming pool, along with her sister, who's portrayed by Karina. And, and she's like this tough bitch in the film, right? And um, and then we <laughs> then it leads to this scene of guilt where she's in the hospital giving birth. Um, and can I just say that her belly does not look pregnant at all. I don't know what the producers of this movie are doing, though, the... the person who does the costumes but that belly of hers just looks fucking weird you know she gives birth one baby dies ha 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 it was the uh evil doll that had set up all of this along the way um but she just suffers this postnatal depression like i said they call it baby blues great title for the film to be honest and um starts treating the doll as it's uh the dead child <sighs> And she really kind of plays into it. And I kind of feel sorry for the husband at certain points because she turns a bit fucking fruity. And to his credit, he sticks with her. That wouldn't have been too easy. And then to the side, you got this fucking annoying sister-in-law who won't leave him alone. He deserves a medal for this shit. Anyway, the movie has some really really terrible cgi i mean we're talking 2013 to 2023 right now so it's 10 years ago right the cgi is terrible like some of the sequences are going to flash them up on the scene while during this section of the video fucking horrendous but when the doll curses people i I do like the way that looks with the dolls pointing and then it swings around to another doll pointing that's pretty good it doesn't save the film though still got a lot of shitty cgi car crash scene's pretty good too i don't mind the car crash scene but baby blues is not a movie that you're going to put on a wish list to watch unless you like raymond lamb and i don't think raymond lamb has too many fans outside of hong kong so i'm not sure sure about that and if you are a raymond lamb fan you've probably already seen this it is a by the numbers chinese Hong Kong horror film that had it not have been Chinese co-production, Hong Kong would have gone full nuts with this film and made it a really awesome possession film. Um, And probably might have been something I'd recommend. So using the Great Horror or Stupid Trash rating, you're probably not getting much out of me from this whole rant that I've just given for the last eight minutes. I'm going to give this movie two ghosts. Um... Because visually, I like the look of it, other than some of the shitty CGI. And I like uh, Lo Hoi Pong's character, the old guy who lives across the road. 
I just, I just think, imagine moving into a luxury house and having a homeless guy living directly across the road. <laughs> That's fucked. <laughs> Only in Hong Kong, surely, uh, could something like that happen. Thing is, they don't, exp- they don't explicitly say they're living in Hong Kong, but it's kind of obvious they are. And they're all speaking Cantonese, except for um, the main actress, who seems to be, yeah, she's dubbed in Mandarin, but I believe she's a Taiwanese actress, so it probably makes sense that she dubbed herself in Mandarin. Anyway, or she's speaking in Mandarin and they've dubbed her Cantonese voice over the top. Uh, not a film I really want to recommend. And in fact, all four episodes, all four movies from tonight's movie uh, video, I'm just really not that great. But, you know, I made an episode and I'm kind of happy to have made another episode. Episode 16, can't believe I've gotten that far. If you enjoyed it, please press like. Uh, if you're new to my ramblings and you think that you want to watch more, I'm encouraging you to do so. Enjoy the psychotic ride that we go through. Otherwise, I'll catch you next time on uh, My Week is uh, My Week in Horror. I don't know when that will be, but I kind of do want to look at this one about the, the foreign directors who made horror movies in China. Because one of them is Tero Ishii. <laughs> if you know anything about him, you should know that he taking on a Chinese horror movie was a stupid idea. Anyway, let's check that out in the future. I'm the Artie Dance. Thank you for watching this video, and I will catch you next time.